there's been so much stuff written about this and like originally there was i know sean had some stuff uh, i've read a couple of different reports like do you even understand what the consensus is on what the frustration was last night so i gotta uh, what time exactly did this happen do you know i i don't i know it ha i know they left like m right before or maybe as the show was going on okay so i got a text around 10 o'clock from from wwe regarding I, I mean like wwe it was it was the same official statement you know that everybody got uh that sean posted so that is their narrative that is the wwe take on this that is the official what sean posted is the official stance this is the official wwe statement okay 10 32 i got this message when sasha banks and naomi arrived to the arena this afternoon they were informed of their participation in the main event of raw of tonight's monday night raw during the broadcast they walked into wwe head of talent relations john laurinaitis's office with with a suitcase in hand placed their title championship belts on the desk on his desk i wonder if anybody got in trouble for that belts uh, yes. put it on his desk and walked out. They claimed they weren't respected enough as a tag team, as tag team champions, even though they had eight hours to rehearse and construct their match. They claimed that they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents, even though they'd had matches with them in the, uh, those individuals in the past with no consequences. And this is fascinating. Monday night raw is a scripted TV show <laughs> whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contracts. We regret that we were unable to deliver as advertised tonight's main event. That is the first time WWE has apologized for changing the script. Okay. Okay. So, so, so there are a couple things there, here. That that's really rich, right? Because yeah. a there, there's two there's two things that pop out to me. A they change the friggin' main event all the time. Like all the time. You know yeah. we, how many stories are there have been Vince? You know changing the show as it goes on, and people have to like you know race to to finish some stuff but the second thing at the upfronts aren't they trying to portray themselves as life sports <laughs> yes yes <laughs> like that is that is a whole shift every AEW as well AEW yeah. and WWE WWE shifted I think recently uh they they didn't really consider themselves live sports uh USA had them under drama for a while and now the whole you know everything has changed for contract uh, TV rights fees and everything sports yeah. is getting paid a lot more so better position yourself like that but two things stood out here okay one the fact that they said that this is a scripted TV show and they're treating it like you know uh George Clooney walked off the set of ER cuz he was very upset when they were going live you know or something like that but the other thing is that they had eight hours to rehearse. I've never seen WWE say that ever that they're rehearsing, and they also say it said that they were they claimed that they were uncomfortable comfortable in the ring with the two of the opponents. Now, if they did say that, right? And I was told that the, the these claims that the WWE statement comes from these are direct accounts from Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis. Okay, this isn't the, the, the what was sent out was the direct account of what happened that 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 is what they are saying now there's another story out there i've seen a couple of reports that you know they were trying to talk to producers and writers and try to piece you know fix what they were unhappy with and they were yep. told to correct their attitudes multiple times <laughs> wow and, and, and yeah and if that is true listen i got a six-year-old <laughs> when i tell my kids correct your attitude they get you know they get a little bit more hysterical that is, is did it did, were they met with a wall immediately or were they you know did it did it escalate to that level that's what we're going to find out and listen I, I think i think the truth is somewhere in the middle i don't think wwe you know intentionally tried to do something to harm these two in any way as far as the characters go because there's a lot of invested interest in in making this work but there is a report that they tried to talk to like everybody before they went to John Laurinaitis and Vince. And I believe that I, I 100 percent believe that. I don't think they, you know, went into Vince's office or John John Laurinaitis' office with I'm leaving. You know, uh, you're going to change this or I'm leaving. Um, I, the story is that they went to a producer, they went to whatever agents, producers, writers to try to fix this and kind of figure it out. And nobody could really figure it out. Uh, I think that's more of the reality of of what happened here but you know when you look at it and, and this is this is going to be obviously the wwe spin so you're they're going to say well 
how bad do we do by these people? We put them in the main event. One uh, one was going to challenge for the title. The other one was also going to challenge for a title. They're the tag team champions. They have this, mm-hmm. you know, they're in the main event of Raw. They're going to be, you know, two top matches on the pay-per-view. What else do you want from us? Yep. That's going to be their stance. And, yep. you know, PR-wise, optics-wise, they're going to win that, right? They're going to win that. Uh, I'm not saying that I agree with WWE here at all. But in their PR battle to change the optics of this, that's going to be their stance. Like, well, what else did you want from us? Yeah. I don't have a stance on this because I don't know what the truth is, to be honest. I only know what WWE told me. And uh, now you're seeing a lot of the rumors uh, come, trickle down. We're yeah. probably going to find out from Naomi and, and Sasha uh, as to what the hell happened on Monday. But wh- where do you, what do you think on this? Dave also brought up that there might be a contract situation here, right? I want to read because this just came out. Um, I think this may have came out last night or this morning. So I believe this was Mike Johnson from uh, PW Insider. He said, the belief among some is that the creative issue was not with Banks losing to Naomi, but how the duo would have been portrayed over the next several weeks, especially after they put so much time into building their team once Vince issued an edict that they would be teaming and winning the titles at Mania 38. And that after diving into building that team, they were going to wrestle each other and go off and put over other talent, leaving them exactly where, which apparently was the crux of the issue, WWE plan it looks to have been that the women's tag team championship could have been downplayed until their next program. So what you said is also what I heard, which is Sasha. And so Naomi wins one of these matches and she faces one of the champions. Sasha faces possibly Ronda, which is actually a great match, by the way. Yeah, but they, they were they were both going to lose and thus the tag team title thing which they're into because they they just won those titles they were going it was going to be sort of like oh now you know we're wrestling as singles and the belts are going to be sort of less important just you know we can't even defend the belts on paper so that from a i get that yeah listen i i totally get that because think about you know they they want to elevate the title right yes and they're doing you you as the company they're they're doing it for you obviously for themselves, but they're by them elevating and being protective of those titles, even though this is not real, uh, they're going to elevate it for the next round of people that get that title and then the future of it. They, you know, I, I, if that's the truth, right, if that's where we fall, you know what, they're absolutely in the right. They're being, they're questioning it. They don't want to, they don't want to position it and be marginalized as, as just a nothing champion. Some of this is my opinion. Most of this is my opinion, but from things that have been said to me, specifically from writers in that company, okay? Yes. And, and I'm going to be honest with this. I, th- this was a couple years ago, and when Sasha got the Mandalorian uh, gig, yes. right? Yes. Uh, when Sasha got that, the same time I was told specifically by, by people, I would say this person was a writer there, or I don't think this person's a writer there still, but, you know, they, the way that they were complaining, and they didn't say it to me like this, but they were really addressing it like, you know, they... I would say that they are maybe a little bit, some of them, uh, a little bit less positive when the female talent approaches them with, with, with criticism compared to the men. Okay. So uh, that was my Roman point, right? That's what I was wondering, yeah. which is not only from a male and female standpoint, but from a star standpoint, rock, I mean, not rock, <laughs> Roman, Brock, yeah. Roman plus Brock, I guess in my head e- equals rock, Roman, Brock, Seth, Randy. Cody, if those guys had gone up, Rhonda, um, I, I would, I, I sh- uh, maybe Becky, like if those folks had come up and, and in the same scenario, is this a different situation or is it because Sasha and Naomi aren't at that tier in their eyes? Which to me, Sasha's the best. To me, Sasha is one of the best seven or eight wrestlers in the entire company and the best female wrestler in ring on on the roster. So I have her in very high regard. Not that she can do no wrong, but I just think she's tremendous. So there may be some bias on my end just because of how how big of a fan I am. But she seems to... There are always rumors kind of about how happy or unhappy she is there. Now, I think a big part of... Because people go, well, why did she you know, sign up with them again? Part of it is she is so much of a bigger uh, star to people 
not only in WWE because of that name, Sasha Banks, tremendous name, by the way. Yeah. Then she would be with her real name, right? Does like can she market herself to do stuff like the college football commercials, the Mandalorian as Mercedes? Now, Mercedes is a pretty cool name too, but she's Sasha Banks to everybody. And Sasha Banks looks like somebody is Snoop Dogg's cousin, feels like she's a bigger than life persona. And if she doesn't have that name, then she kind of has to kind of rebrand, restart, do all that stuff all over again. So that's part of it because she's a, she's a that, that's just a tremendous personality and star uh, to people. They just know who that is. Now, yeah. I, I guess the thing that is interesting is the Naomi piece of this because Naomi, she's been with this company for how long? She's done the diva stuff. She's, uh, yeah, she's come in champion, world champion, but. Well, yeah, I, I mean, she didn't have like this fantastic run. I don't think no. she ever got elevated to where maybe she could have. But um, she also has a husband and a brother-in-law and a cousin to the brother-in-law also in that company. So yeah. you would seem that, you know, it would it would feel like she would be a little bit more protected than that. But maybe that's just not how it works. You know, that statement positioned it as like we're going to bury the talent here and whether or not it's true we'll find out exactly where the truth is i think some of it is true what they're saying obviously uh but how did it get to this point how do you how do you get from you know uh whatever hour they got to the building they worked on their stuff then everything fell apart how do you how does things fall apart at eight o'clock nine o'clock when the show is happening that's my question how does that happen Listen, if you're head of talent relations, your your sole job is to prevent this from happening. Uh, I'm not I'm not saying John Laurinaitis is, is is terrible at his job. I'm saying this is an unfortunate night for him as head of yeah. talent relations. Your your job is to be diplomatic. You have to be totally diplomatic and attempt to fix this. Uh, possibly he was, but it didn't get fixed at all. And that statement shows a lot of anger from the WWE side as to how it happened. You know, you got two, you got. You know, one one very connected to your top talent and in a top position to face your women's champion to, as a tag team champion. The other one, multi-time you know women's champion, uh, and one of your one of your most recognizable female names in the company, and you you let them walk out like this. Yeah, there there there's some more to this. This is that story. Someone in the chat room said that, that that statement has a lot of holes. Absolutely, has a ton of holes.